Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 6th, and here are the activities for today. In math, we have a sorting coins activity. Um, this is a little bit different because there are six different slides in this activity, and I'm going to show you how to move through all six of those slides. Okay, so going into Seesaw, okay, it's called Money for Sorting Coins. We're going to add our response. We're going to use our Move tool to sort the quarters and the nickels. Um, these sometimes can be a challenge for students because they're both silver. Um, also, the presidents face the same way, so they kind of have to um, look at the coins a little bit longer. Sometimes they'll notice that it says quarter dollar at the bottom of the quarter. So any little trick will help. Um, so once they have sorted all of the coins um, into the chart, there is a little arrow over here, um, and I would like you to click, whoops, I'm sorry about that, click the next slide. Um, you can see that I do have the slides open. Um, so you'll click to the next slide. Let's let that load for a second. Sorry, my computer is running a little slow. Okay, here we go. So the next slide is pennies and the quarter. Okay, again, that should be easy. They'll move all the pennies to one side and all the quarters to the other side. Um, and as you can see, there are six slides over here. Um, so you'll want to move through all six slides before you click the green check mark. Don't just do the first slide and then click the check mark. I do want the students to go through all six of them. Um, again, it just gives them different practice distinguishing the coins from each other because sometimes they are similar because they're the same color. Again, sometimes the president's faces um, do face the same way. Um, so just a quick sorting activity for today. When you do get to the sixth slide and all the coins are moved over, then you can click the green check mark and move on. Okay, I'm not going to save my response. Um, so that was something that was different um, that I wanted to show you in today's activity. Okay, um, the next thing on our list is reading. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, in reading. There is a video and a making connections worksheet activity. And just like how I did yesterday with the retelling and the Sophia Read Aloud, I linked the video and the activity together. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so you will see Making Connections with Sophia. Again, first, um, Mrs. Sander today is on the video, and she's going to talk about making connections um, in the book. So you're going to click on the link button, and this will take you to YouTube. And it's hello, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Sander today, um, so you get to hear from her. So I would suggest watching that video first, and then to do the writing activity, you can hit the add response button. And here's the format for today. Um, so it says, sometimes readers make a connection. Sophia had to persuade her family into letting her get a giraffe for her birthday. Have you ever tried to use persuasion for something? Now, I know some of us like to use this text button and, um, you know, type in our response here. For some, that's easier than others. I don't expect their writing to be perfect, perfectly spelled, as long as they're using the correct format here, that is perfectly fine. Um, what you could also do is students have their journals at home with them. If they do prefer writing over typing, um, they can answer the same prompt. And what I would like you as the adult or the parent to do, last week we talked about adding this picture to our response. That's fine. You can also, I know my screen cut it off, but at the bottom over here it says add 
page. You can add a page and then you can click the camera. Again, it won't let me actually show you how to take a picture, but once you take the picture of their work, if you could please, please, please use the, um, um, what are they called? The little buttons on the side of the picture to expand the photo so I can see it. Sometimes it's been showing up as this teeny, teeny, tiny picture and I can't read anything. So if you could make it a little bit larger for me, that would be wonderful. And then you can click add response. Um, again, you can type or please take a picture of their writing and attach it here um, as a new page. Um, and that way it kind of keeps everything organized for me as well. All right. I know that was a little bit long, so if you need to, you can go back and listen to my directions really quick. For grammar today, we have a contraction activity. Let me show you how that works. Okay. So this one, you can use the drawing tool or the text tool to um, write the contractions. And then I would like to hear um, the students reading the contractions they made. So let me show you how that will work. Um, so the first one I did for you and I used the text tool and I just typed in the contraction. Also, um, don't forget to add your apostrophe. Some friends on Monday forgot to add their apostrophe. Um, so let's make sure we do that because sometimes it does change the meaning of the word. And again, all I did was use these um, little handles to stretch um, and shrink the word so it fits in the box. You can also use the drawing tool and write um, the contraction that way. I know I'm doing the same example. I just didn't want to give too many <laughs> answers away. So you have your option. Whatever works for you, click the green check mark um, and that will send it to me when you're all finished. And then today, lastly, we have Raz Kids. So just read one story and answer the questions on the story that you read. Okay, that's it today. Oh, also, I did um, forget to mention Reflex again. If you did it twice already, Monday and Tuesday, you don't have to do it again today. So don't stress out about that. But I put it there, um, you know, in case you need something extra to do today. Alrighty, enjoy your Wednesday.